What's going on guys, Jack here and I am back with a brand new career mode series courtesy of Career Mode Stars on Twitter. Go check them out in the link in the description down below. It is a career mode challenge. This is number one that he has done this year, Raul Betis. Um, we're going to look to complete all these challenges here. So make sure you have a look at them. Uh, we, obviously, we can only sign um, under 21 players from outside of Spain. So we're going to have a look at our transfer targets going into that one. The objective is to win the Europa League. Uh, must grow overall by uh, players overall by 10. Complete three out of six ball objectives and go undefeated against Sevilla. Have an average age of 24 and concede no more than 55, um, 55 goals and score 65. Uh, good to see there. So the three players we have transfer listed over 32 that we must get rid of. Uh, Joaquin, 36 years old. Uh, over 30 years old, should I say, sorry. Uh, Javi Garcia and Andreas Guadrado. Uh, Guardado, very good players here. But guys, before we get to this episode, if you could smash that like button, I would very really much appreciate it. Also, subscribe if you are new around here. So, let's have a look at the players we have shortlisted. Uh, Gomez, Brahim Diaz, uh, Papa Chic Diop. Looks like a very good player. Looks like one of the top of my list. Another player on top of my list is Danny Almo uh, of Dinamo, Dinamo Zagreb. Obviously, 20 years of age. Uh, Mbula looks like a very good player too. Down that right-hand side. Four-star school moves and five-star weak foot, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, Angelino and Paul Liora we won't be able to sign because they have just joined their clubs uh, which is rather disappointing but the other players we are free to sign and we will try and sign them uh, seem fit to the team so here's what we're going with press after possession loss we're going to be playing a 4-2-3-1 this season uh, we're going to play possession football uh, when we're on, on the offence um, obviously a full, full width for the uh, pace wings we have in Christian Tello and uh, we're looking to play in Bula probably there or maybe um, whoever, whoever we sign, maybe Brahim Diaz can play there too. Uh, the board overview is pretty much, um, you know, the same. We've got to win Europa League, I believe. They want a Champions League spot and within two seasons increase the club's worth by 30%. Um, definitely think that's doable. I think we can get a Champions League spot. I think we can give Europa League a good go and we can obviously increase the worth of the team. So the first um, bit of business that is going on in this episode is Loren to be leaving the club. Um, we do try to negotiate a deal here. We do say 24 million euros and he can go off to Bournemouth. He's currently worth 14 million euros. Uh, we do go in negotiations with Eddie Howe and he does uh, accept it. Uh, he looks like Loren could be the first player leaving the club. Obviously, he, he's not a player that feels that objective. And I, in hindsight, I might regret doing that one because we can't bring any other players in under the age of 20, uh, over the age of 21, should I say, um, or, or outside of Europe, in, in matter of fact. But uh, uh, we do move on to our first game, sorry, in. Uh, Europe uh, in pre-season. <laughs> Jesus, I can get my words out in a minute. Uh, but the boost does put us 1-0 up with Loren making it 2-0. Obviously, he could be leaving the club. This ain't going to be our final squad and I'm pretty sure, hopefully, this doesn't go towards the objective. This is just pre-season. Just trying to get the squad together. Um, when the season does start, we'll be playing at average age of 24, at least trying to as much as possible. In uh, 50% of our games, that is. But the game does come to an end. It is a 3 1 win against Leverkusen, which is absolutely brilliant. As we look to go forward here, Loren and Bula Boos amongst the goals. Uh, here's our group for the Europa League, though AC Milan, Olympiacos, and Burnley are amongst the teams. Uh, Milan are going to be the biggest threat in that group. They're a great side, and uh, looking at, it'd be interesting to see what they can. Um, they can do against us, so that'd be a massive challenge for us. But a chance for does come in for our queen, 8.2 million for Roma. We do accept that one, and it looks like it could be on his way. And another deal does come in for Guardado here uh, from PSG, 21 million euros. I accept that one straight off the bat. Uh, we could have got a little bit more for him, but um, money's not an issue in this career mode, and um, we do look to get to going. But we do look to bring some players in there. And the first one is Papa Chic Diop. We do um, look to get him in the deal. He's worth 7 million euros at the moment, the Leon man. He's not a first team player, so we do try and uh, push our luck a bit. We'll go 8 million here uh, for the Leon representative here, and hopefully he can go with it. And he does. So Diop looks like he can be joining the team here. We do go to negotiations after that, but we do go for our next player, Pep Guardiola, in the office, and we do try and get Brahim Diaz on board. We do offer his value at face value 2.2 million euros. And Guardiola says that's a fair offer. So that's two players potentially in the books. Next one we meet with is the one I want to get, Danny Olmo uh, from Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, we do offer 10 million euros. Let's see what they say about that. They come back saying 11.6 with a 5% sell-on clause, uh, which I found interesting. So I do put that down to 11 million, his current value, and see what he does come back with. And he doesn't budge on it. We do look to get him in for 11 million, which is great. Next player we do go for is Jordi Inbula, the right-hand 
uh, midfielder uh, from AS Monaco. We do offer just a little under his value, 3.2, but Monaco rep being a bit more difficult to deal with here. He says he wants 4.650. Uh, so I do drop it down by a mil, um, mil point one, so three and a half fifty. He won't budge. He definitely wants that fee. And there's a part of me thinking I don't want to be too petty on the price. So we do try and go low one more time to three point seven fifty, and he's happy with that. So I'm happy with that too. That's just under four million for Imbula. We do go into contract negotiation now with our players, Brahim Diaz. Now all these players will be getting rotation, but they will have a massive part to play in this season because obviously we have to get the average age to 24. So do offer a rotation role and a five-year deal for Brahim Diaz. They want a six million euro release clause, which I'm not looking to put in because he has a great potential. Um, and last thing I want is for him to hit um, some good heights this season and then his release clause gets activated straight away. So we do look to remove that straight away. We deny it. We do not want a release clause in his contract. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep him recover as, as long as possible. So we do move on to wages now. They didn't give me indication what they want. I do offer... I believe I offer... I think 20. I do offer 20, Euro, uh, 20 grand a week and 120 grand signing bonus. That's a fair offer. Diaz does sign on the dotted line. And that's one player in. The second player we're going to get is Pape Cheek Diop. Rotation roll yet again. He's on 31 grand a week. We're going to look to bring that down slightly. Um, again, money's not going to be an issue once all these deals go through. And hopefully they will go through before the end of the window. And guys, just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying the series so far, make sure you do hit that subscribe button and like this video for more. Or we'd really appreciate it. And hopefully get an episode out for you guys tomorrow. As you can see here, we do move on to wage. Massive cut in his wages, 17 and a half grand, and automatically that's a great deal for me. I'm accepting that. A couple of bonuses on his deal, but um, uh, nothing he won't reach. Now the player I want to get, Danny Olmo. We offer him a rotation role in the club. He wants a five-year deal, which I am more than happy to accept. He's on 15 grand a week currently, but we do move on to the uh, nitty-gritty stuff very, uh, very quickly. They want a 33 and a half, pretty much million euro uh, release clause. I say I don't have any intentions of giving that. Uh, let's move on. I, I, I'm not a fan of putting release clauses in contracts. They just cause um, the, the bargaining chips for um, for players. But as you can see, he wants the same wage. He wants 135 grand sign-on bonus and um, a big bonus for uh, five appearances. But he's going to be playing these games. So I do try and remove this bonus here. Um, I'm not interested in it. I do actually up it to 20 games, I do believe. And put up to 150, I believe. Yeah, so I, I, I do. I, I try and bargain here. So I offer the same. See what he says. He could definitely play 20 games this season. That's the only thing. Um, they're happy with it. 15 grand a week. That is our fourth summer signing. Um, obviously, joining the likes of Diaz and Diop. Actually, I think that's the third. Mbulo is going to be the fourth here that we'll move on to. Um, rotation player yet again. 14 and a half grand a week is currently on but a five year deal nevertheless for another good player um, we're not interested in giving him a release clause but every single agent at the moment seems to want this release clause 13 and a half million is dirt cheap for Imbula um, as a release clause and again it's something I'm just not interested in giving I, I, I don't want to go and negotiate on it I'd rather just move on straight on to wages so he is currently on 14 and a half grand so I'm thinking let's put him about 15 offer him 500 pound um, euros more a week See what he says, nothing from a 16 um, grand sign bonus. And he's happy with that, and he does sign on the dotted line. So that is four signings, I believe. Olmo comes in, Diop comes in, Imbula comes in, and Diaz comes in. Four great signings, 11 million, 8 million, 3.75 uh, million, and 2.2 million. Some great deals there, and hopefully they come good by the end of the season. Only time will tell as you do move on to our next game is against Napoli, obviously coming off of a win against Leverkusen, we're looking to shock Napoli here, who are probably going to be the favourites in this game um, it'll be interesting to see how they do do, so um, the, the whole point of this series is to drive um, young um, Spanish players, uh, obviously bring them in the spotlight which is what we're trying to do here at Real Betis and uh, obviously uh, challenge Europe, uh, the goal is to win Europa League, which I feel like we can do, there's some big teams in there like Chelsea, but um, hopefully we can we can get the better of them when we do play them. But we do win 1-0 against Napoli here. And Loren is the first player to be sold from the side. 24 million euros, 19 and a half million euros goes into the transfer kitty. Uh, which we can spend on a player that's going to be a Spanish player, I do believe, outside the league. 
the top five leagues that can um, have a role of important first team players. It'll be interesting to see who we can bring in there. Guardado also leaves the club. Six and a half million going in for our transfer kitty there as we get ready for a game against West Ham, my team, in the last group game of this European tournament uh, in pre season. That is, um, there's the team. It'll be interesting to see how they do. do. Um, West Ham and Manuel Pellegrini playing a very uh, relaxed side. Uh, Reese Oxford in there, uh, Sanchez in there, uh, Declan Rice also, a few notable names, but the rest are all youngsters like Zande Silva, uh, obviously the Portuguese young forward, Ryan Fredericks at the back, Reese Oxford and Nathan Trott in net. But it will be us that starts off well here. Danny Olmo down that left hand side, cuts inside. Uh, first 15 minutes here, this is Sergio Leon plays it into Canellis. Canellis gets a shot away, tries to bend it around Trott. Never going to happen, and it does go out uh, into the keeper's hands. But we do come forward again. Francis in that right back role uh, into Lo Celso here. Uh, does find William Carvalho into Olmo back into Sergio Leon. Turns away from his man and drags it wide of the mark. Not the most entertaining the games. We do go into the second half here. Under two chances uh, between the two of us. Two of us as Tello plays the ball into Sergio Leon here. Cuts back inside to Christian Tello. Tello now plays it into Olmo. Olmo onto the ball. Cuts back inside. Crosses it in. Finds him. Bula can't find the back of it though. Still nil nil between the two sides. Olmo puts the ball over the top yet again and does find Christian Tello. Tello cuts it back. Uh, takes on Fredericks, plays it into Sergio Leon, turns away from his man, shoots, blocks into Danny Almo, turns, shoots, second time I've asked him, back in the net. Betis have the lead, it's the first goal under my tenure, and it is Danny Almo, the new signing. Brilliant play here. Um, great goal, really good goal to score. I'm happy with that, and um, like I said, we find ourselves 1 0 up. The team's looking solid. We knew what play we wanted to get, and I told you Danny Almo would be one of the players I was uh, definitely interested in getting, um, obviously, from, I believe, Croatia. Uh, Dinamo Zagreb is, um, I could be wrong, it could be Ukraine, but I'm pretty certain it is a Croatian side. I could be horribly wrong though, but looking good so far. West Ham would come forward, their first real attack of the game is Lanzini's onto the pitch, obviously off the sub bench. Does find Holland into Obiang, again another player off the bench. Does find Zande Silva into Holland, great save by Paul Lopez there to keep the game. In our favour. West Ham come forward again. Cresswell into Holland. And now of now a player fresh off the bench into Sanchez. Into Lanzini. Back into Lanzini from now of Paul Lopez does save yet again as we approach the last couple of minutes of this game. Pask loses out to Mbula. Tries to play the through ball. He does. Brahim Diaz has to um, cut away from his man. It's still Diaz onto the ball. Takes the shot round the post. No doing there. Still 1 0 to Betis as we approach the last moments of this game here. West Ham trying to come forward. Francis cuts it out into Bartra. Bartra finds William into Cheek into Diaz. Diaz finds Sambria back into Cheek. Um, what a finish that is, Diop. That is stunning. 2 0 to Betis. It is Cheek Diop there. Uh, stunning finish on his weak foot also. Um, wow, we come on in about the 60th minute and he donned the game. He really does look like a real baller. Uh, for Lo Celso, he will have to probably play most of the games to reach our Spanish criteria. We have to play eight players in the starting 11 uh, for, I believe, 50% of the games also. So that'd be good to see. Uh, great play, though, from uh, Diop. That is a stunning finish into the roof. Isn't it? No chance for the goalkeeper. The game does finish. The two new signings on the board. It is 2-0 to Real Betis, which is absolutely incredible. And we look to build on that next episode as we look to... Uh, cap off pre-season and obviously win the uh, the pre-season tournament which would be great the deal does come in for Xavi Garcia another player uh, over 30 that we need to sell and uh, we do accept it 7.4 million to go to Braga in Portugal that means him and Joaquin the last players to leave but guys that is unfortunately going to bring it into episode 1 of the Real Betis career mode if you do enjoy the series as always make sure you do slap a like on this video I would really much appreciate it go check out career mode stars on Twitter for all career mode content and um, like I said we've already beat one of our objectives in season one we have reached uh, sold three players over the age of 30 they have gone they will leave the club which is absolutely brilliant as always guys have a really nice day I'll catch you all in the next one peace